the film marketers, Professor Walters here, and today we're going to continue our conversation on developing your personal brand, okay? And, and we've already gone through the first few steps. We have another video on there. Just go below. You'll find the link. You can watch that one. And we're moving on to our fourth step. And now what we really need to do is really create our brand. You know, why is it that I have for Walters World, it's a train with, with some dude standing on the station. Why is that? You want to start thinking about the emotions and words you want people to associate with you. Well, the emotion here is, look, we're all on the train station together, right? Doesn't matter if you're rich, if you're poor, if you're a student, if you're a retiree, if you're a family, we all stand and wait for the train together. Doesn't matter if you're first class or, or, or it's economy or whatever, we're all there together. And that's the thing is that's what our travel's about. We're trying to help all travelers, whether you are that student backpacker going to Europe for the summer, or if you're you know going to if you're heading out to Southeast Asia, or if you're a family going to Disney World, we want to help you out. And that's the thing is when I look at it, that's what we our brand really is. That's the emotion we want to have with people is look, we're giving you honest travel advice for anybody that's traveling, okay? And so when you have that kind of idea behind your brand, that makes it easier for you to create that brand, okay? So you think about it, what emotions do we want to evoke? What words do we want people to think about us? You know, when people think about the travel stuff, I want them to think honest travel advice. I want them to think positivity. You know, in our videos for business, I'm always trying to stay positive with everything that's out there. Let's have a positive, fun learning environment. Like that's what I want people to have when they think of the Professor Walters brand, right? And so you have to think about that as well. What emotions do we want people to have? What words do we want them to use? And try to build your personal brand, your personal slogan around that. And so that's where you have those emotions. That's where you have those images. That's why when you look at companies and they develop their brands, the color schemes they use kind of bring out different kinds of emotions. If I want to be more environmentally friendly and stuff like that, yeah, I'm going to be using more of the greens, the browns, the blues, more earth tones kind of stuff. If I want people to get hungry, we got the red because the red color makes people hungry. Yeah. And if you want to be, hey, look, I'm really fast. Sometimes though, look, it's just black and white because it's simple. It's straight to the point. We're not wasting our time on drones and things like that. We're just trying to give you honest advice because this is honestly what you're going to do when we go there. We're showing you the real stuff. And so that's what you want to kind of do. And, and another thing with those emotions, you want to think about the storytelling you're going to use in order to create your brand. Okay. The storytelling for Professor Walters. Look, I realize students learn in many different ways. I have students that need the face to face. I know I have students that really, you know, they, they learn from reading the book. I've got students that like to watch videos. They learn that way. And I realized everybody learns in a different way. So no matter if it's a face-to-face -face student or online or, or someone likes to read, I want to have all the opportunities out there for them to learn as much as they can. That's why we have all these things. Even things we talk about in class, I'll still have videos for, because you know what? Even that student falls asleep in class, I don't want them to be penalized so they can watch the video later and learn from it, okay? Other things you look at is think of the storytelling you hear about other brands. You know. Walmart, right? Walmart will talk about how Sam Walton, he would, you know, make collect calls to their suppliers. He would make people share hotel rooms when they go on the road and things like that to save every dime he could so he could pass that savings on to his customers. Well, what does that show you? That Walmart brand, it's all about saving as much money as possible so you, the customer, can save money. And we all know that. We all get that emotion. You know, you're like, I'm going to Walmart. Yeah, it's going to be cheap. I know I'm not going to spend a lot of money. Like that's the emotion as well. And so you kind of think about that and you want to do that when you're creating your brand. Now, the next thing you need to do when you're developing your personal brand is you really got to create like your network and ecosystem so people can share your information, know about your information, all kinds of things. So whether you have your homepage or your, your online spaces and your social media, things like that, you have those in there, but you're doing all these things to really kind of build up your network and create a network. And so when you're looking at your network, you might look at it as like, who are the influencers in this industry? Who are the people I need to be, you know, in contact with? Who could I, who could help me grow, but also who could I help? And so that's what you have to look at. You look at those experts. It's like anytime I tell people when they want to develop a YouTube channel, I say, look, go watch your 20 favorite YouTubers and then go watch your 20 favorite YouTubers in the area that you niche that you want to make videos for and I'll write down what you like, what you lo love and hate about them and learn from that, right? Because you can learn a lot from them. And, and so you do those things. You figure out is who are the experts who do know things. That's how I want to be involved with. That's why you'll see sports companies will fight over the big athletes because they know, look, if we can network with LeBron, 
boom, we're going to be everywhere, right? Because you know, he, he's all over the place. And so when we're creating this network, though, it's not just about finding influencers. It's like knowing them and getting to know them and stuff like that. But it's also reaching out and figuring out how you can help other people in your kind of community. Like, look, if you're giving back, if you're donating time, if you're giving free advice or whatever, that can help build it up. So think about it, if there's forums out there where people are asking questions, like on LinkedIn or Twitter, and people are, you're constantly commenting, not just commenting, but like good comments, adding value to it, people notice, hey, that guy, that guy or that lady, she, they're, they're doing a good job like with some of their comments, I'm gonna check out more about them. I go to events and I go to you know conferences for professors and people come up to me and they're like hey I use your videos in my class I'm like oh that's that's awesome and right away they're like hey you know I appreciate this can you help me out because since they've used my videos in class it's kind of like they said you know what I trust you so I trust your opinion and so if you can help people out I mean think about it that teacher you had back in grade school that helped you they will always mean something to you Mr. Moore forever brother okay help me out I mean it's who knows what fifth grade was so long ago but you have that kind of thing out there so if you're helping out in your community there can do there can be that and that's why it's important to say look your network is not just online okay you do need to get out in your community you need to get out of your industry go to those industry events go to those trade fairs do those things to get out there so people can see you and you don't just walk by you walk by and you talk to them hi Mark Walters nice to meet you where are you teaching at what are you doing these kind of things, things you need to do to help develop that personal brand. So that's why it's really important when you develop your personal brand, you really make sure you get involved and share. I mean, you need to be the one that's starting the conversations. That's gonna build up your brand there. I mean, actively engaging with people, actively engaging with your industry, other insiders, customers, suppliers, salespeople, supply chain things. If you're the person that knows everybody, that goes a long way of building that network and building your personal brand, all right? and so. When you're doing that, I think one thing that's important is you need to make sure you're creating your own original content. So you're writing your own blogs on topics, on industry things and things like that. You're posting on Twitter and you're posting on LinkedIn, you're posting on Facebook about these things so people can see that. Now the thing is, your company might want you like, hey, you can't do that. Well, the thing is, if it's your personal size, like, look, I'm just expressing my personal things. That's why you see on Twitter, people will say, these are opinions are mine. They are not the opinions of my company or my employer, blah, blah, blah. So you can put out your opinions. Because the thing is, is your company will fire you like that. Let's be honest. Like loyalty, there's no loyalty in business anymore. They will get rid of you like that. And so you got to think about is, hey, when that next job comes up, will I have the right personal brand out there? Will they find that? I mean, I've had schools come contact me because they found my videos. They're like, hey, are you available? I'm like, um, I wasn't really looking, you know? But the thing is, people will go out there because the content's out there. So make sure you're making that original content. And remember, each one of those different social media platforms have different breakdowns in terms of who's watching, what kind of content they want, how they engage, stuff like that. And we kind of talked about that in some other videos. But I mean, I look at it like Facebook is mostly female for me, whereas YouTube is 70% male. And so you start seeing it's like, oh, it's a different audience. It's different things they're going for. The length of the video, the topics, we all kind of want to think about those things, all right? The last step I want to talk about is make sure you're really listening and monitoring everything. Like, look, you got to watch the news. You got to know what's going on. I mean, if I'm in travel and I don't know that Hertz is go like filed for bankruptcy or this airline's in trouble, people are like, wait, how can you be an expert and you don't know that knowledge? It was on the normal news. Like, you have to stay abreast of this kind of stuff. That's why when we talk about your personal brand, if you want to develop it, if you know it's going to happen before it happens, people are like, wow, you saw the future. Yeah, I'm an expert in the area. I should know this, right? And so make sure you're watching news, keeping abreast of all what's being said, what's going on. That's why you're following so many different people in social media so you can learn from them, all right? And another thing I think with the listen part of per your personal brand is don't shy away from criticism. Look, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. You know, there's trolls out there. Yes, but you know what? You can learn from people. You can learn from that criticism because some people you criticize and they're like, oh, I hate you. I will never listen to you again. Huh. Well, you know what? Their criticism might actually be true and you can learn from that. That's why for me, I still read the trolls. I read the stuff because sometimes they make a point like, hey, how many of you are like, Mark, what's with the audio here? Well, it's because it's windy and I'm trying to film this for a class that starts next week. Oh, okay, but still, like, what's with the audio? I need to do a better job with that. Maybe I need to put an extra wind sock on because I have two wind socks on the camera right now on the microphone to make this thing work. So, hey, I'm trying at least, all right? 
and that goes into another thing is you also have to always be constant vigilance. Remember your Harry Potter days? Yeah, we all were there. Mad Eye Moody, remember you, buddy. Okay. And the thing is, Mad Eye was right. If you think back, Mad Eye had all kinds of gadgets to make sure no bad guys were going to get him or anything like that. And, and that's the same thing you have to do with your personal brand. You need to monitor things. You need to be checking up on your website and your Twitter feed and your Facebook and your LinkedIn. Am I keeping up to date on everything? Are people putting bad recommendations or bad reviews about me or, or about my brand or about my company or about these things? You have to look at those things. You got to keep abreast of it, okay? Because sometimes there's things you can't do about it. But you know what? I can say something about that you know people say well he doesn't know any i mean i get this a lot from my travel channel all you do is europe well actually we have 2,000 videos of which there's probably 500 from south america so we do have other stuff and i always like to point out to the people that look youtube recommends videos that you've already been watching so it's not that i don't make non-european videos it's that you only watch european travel videos Oh, yeah, and so you want to make sure you have this constant vigilance watching out what's going on so you can make sure your brand doesn't fall. And we have a video on how to blow your personal brand, so you should probably watch that video next to see what's going on. But I hope this helps you know a little bit better kind of the steps you should take in order to develop your personal brand. And don't forget, it takes time to do that. So I apologize for the extremely stupid high wind. I'm sure the sound sucks on this, but you know what? We'll get through together. Bye.